Algebra 2, Lesson 32, Quotient Theorem for Square Roots, Congruency, and Congruent Triangles. Uh, we're just going to be doing practice A, B, and C. And starting with the practice, we're going to be doing the Quotient Theorem for Radicals. So we have to add two fractional radical numbers. And uh, we can't do that because they're not like terms. But what we can do is we can rationalize the denominator. That's something we should be pretty used to doing by now. Uh, so we'll take each number and multiply it by its uh, its radical denominator to rationalize it. So if we take root 3 over root 5 and we multiply it by root 5 over root 5, that'll rationalize it. Uh, and then we're going to add that to the square root of 5 over square root of 3 multiplied by root 3 over root 3 to rationalize that one. When we multiply this one, root 5 times root 5 just gives us 5. Uh, root 3 times root 15 gives us, or root 5 gives us the square root of 15. And then over here we see something similar. The denominator becomes 3 and the numerator becomes root 15. So now we've got good denominators and we've got some uh, rationalized fractions so we can go ahead and add these two numbers. But we have to get a common denominator. So the common denominator between 3 and 5 is going to be 15. I have to multiply 5 times 3 over 3, and i got to multiply 3 times 5 over 5. So we're doing the same step again. <clears throat> this number right here is going to turn into 3 root 15 over 15, and this one becomes 5 root 15 over 15. Now what we see is in the numerator we have like terms that can be added. So 3 root 15 plus 5 root 15 gives us 8 times the square root of 15 over whole number 15. And that's our final answer. Uh, second problem, same thing with addition, and then they add some whole numbers on the side. So we're just going to do the same thing. Uh, we'll rewrite our numbers down here. 2 root 2 over root 7. Give that some space. And then minus uh, 3 times root 7 over root 2. Rationalize this one by multiplying by root 7 over root 7. That's going to give us... Uh, oh, and then we're also going to take our whole number. We're going to apply it uh, directly to our numerator. So that, that's one thing that might be a little tricky here, is y you may want to um, try to treat it like, an, like a mixed number. That's not the case with these. Uh, they can be treated as multiplication. Uh, so root 2 times root 7 will give us root 14. If we multiply 2 by that, we get 2 times root 14 over whole number 7. Here, uh, we get um, 3 times root 14 over 2. So now we've got uh, this number minus this number. <coughs> And again, we just have to do common denominators. So 2 times root 14 over 7 is going to get multiplied by 2 over 2. Um, <coughs> and that's going to give us 4 times root 14 over 14. So taking that, putting it up here. Um, not forgetting our minus sign. Here, we're going to multiply this one by 7 over 7. And that's going to give us 21 times root 14 over 14. From here, again, we have like terms. Uh, 4 plus negative 21 is going to give us negative 17 times square root of 14 over 14. And that is our final answer. Moving on to practice C. Uh, this is where we're going to start using our congruent triangles. So this is the figure. Actually, let's go to the book. So they give us this figure, and then they tell us that these two triangles are similar by uh, equal angles. And then they also tell us that uh, two corresponding sides have a length of 4, so the scale factor is 1. And the triangles are now congruent by angle, 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 side. So we have two congruent triangles. These are the exact same triangle. We just have to find the unknowns. So if these are the exact same triangle, then I can start using equations to solve for them. So if the length of this side is the exact same length as this side, I can just set these two statements equal to each other in the form of the equation. 4x plus 1 is equal to 12x minus 7. All we have to do now is solve the equation. Uh, we'll move the 7. Um, so then that gives us 8. And then we'll also move the 4x. Okay. 
12x minus 4x, 8x. So then we get 8x, or 8, 8x equals 8, divide by 8, and then you know that x equals 1. So we've already got 1, x equals 1. Now from here, we can write uh, this side is equal to this side as an equation. So we'll go ahead and do that. 4x minus 1 is equal to p. And the cool thing is we can substitute x into this equation. So we know what x equals, so we'll rewrite that as 4 times 1 minus 1 equals p. Uh, simplify this, and we just get 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. So p is equal to 3. x equals 1, p equals 3. Those are our answers, and we can call it a day.